So let's say you've gone through some stuff and you present it to them. You present it to the group, to your boss, whatever. They're gonna tell you that what you experienced didn't happen. They're gonna tell you it wasn't what you thought. They're gonna tell you it's in your head or you're overreacting or you're being sensitive. They're gonna invalidate your feelings. That's not cool. Your, your feelings matter, you matter, your opinion matters, and it's not in your head. You're not making it up. Hello, hello, good morning, happy day. I hope your week and day and month have been amazing so far. If not, hey, there's still plenty of time for it to get better, don't worry. Uh, I'm so glad to have you here. If you've never been here before, my name is Douglas. If you're returning, I'm so glad to see you again. Today, I wanna talk about some surefire ways to tell if you're in a toxic workplace. A toxic work environment is so draining. It's just honestly one of the worst things in the world. And unfortunately, a lot of us have to deal with it. And you know, I just kinda wanna tell you some signs that you're in one and then, I, I don't know that I have all the answers for how to deal with it, but definitely one of the major ways that these workplaces get away with presenting toxic toxicity is by downplaying the fact that it is toxic. A lot of these workplaces are toxic and they don't want you to know it because if you know your value, if you know your worth, then you might quit and get a better job. So I'm gonna tell you some science to know if you might be in the middle of a toxic work environment and maybe you could find something a little better for you. So let's talk about it. Okay, the first sign that you're in a toxic workplace is um, you never know what to expect. What I mean by that is uh, maybe you have a boss that just is constantly all over the place. One day you go in and she's just super happy and she wants to show you pictures of her kids. Or maybe you go in and she wants to yell at you about the fact that you didn't scrub the windows the way that she likes. You know what I'm saying? You just never know what to expect. Either way, this is intentional, especially if you don't know how to tell, how to gauge it based on their tone, because maybe they, they refer to you the same way. Maybe your name is John and they always are like, John. And then when you peek your head around the corner, you don't know what news to expect. They do that on purpose. They wanna keep you guessing because it's a means of control. It's very manipulative and it's very stupid and it's evil and I don't know why people are like this, but they are. So one of the surefire ways is you just don't know what to expect. You should have consistency in your workplace and that's in temperament and that's in how you're treated. It should all, across the board, there should be consistency. If you don't have consistency, that's a surefire way of some level of toxicity in the workplace. It might seem simple, but it's not. And you, if you're going through it, then you know what I'm talking about. Another surefire way to know you're in a toxic workplace is you never get good praise or they move the goalpost. So let's say they set a goal for you. They set an assignment for you. You do the assignment. They don't say good job. They don't thank you for what you've done or they, they push back what the goal was. They move it to another place so that you, you didn't actually accomplish it. Well, so you know that they said they, they wanted you to do A you know that they said that. But then when you present them with A, they're like, well, I wanted you to do B too. So that they never have to actually acknowledge when you've done something good. Another means of control, another manipulative tactic, it's evil, but that's a surefire way. If they're moving the goalpost constantly so that you can't get good praise, so that they avoid telling you good job, that's a toxic work environment. It's, it's so draining, it's so stifling. Like, just tell me good job. <laughs> just acknowledge the good I've done because you're doing great work. I know you are. They wouldn't have hired you if you weren't doing great work. But some people just, I don't know what it is, they just get their rocks off, they get their jollies being in control, and they only get that control at work, especially if they're in a management role. So that's, a, that's just another sign. Be on the lookout. This is an easy one, but another sign that you're in a toxic workplace is you're ignored. And what I mean by that is they don't talk to you. They avoid eye contact with you. They don't involve you in important emails. They're making decisions without you. They're having meetings behind your back, that kind of thing. If you're not included in the group, but you are part of the group, that's toxic. That's abuse and you shouldn't have to deal with it. Maybe you do have to deal with it just because you know you got bills to pay. But like, if that's happening to you, understand that's intentional. It's not in your head. It's not make believe. It's on purpose. They are ignoring you. Don't, don't gaslight yourself because I promise they're also doing that to you, but I'll get into that later. But yeah, being ignored in the workplace, I mean, they know you're there. They know you work there. You come there every day. How can they, how can they forget you? They didn't forget to include you on that email. They didn't forget to invite you to that thing. They did it on purpose. This was in, this was on purpose. It was on purpose. Don't lie to yourself. It was on purpose. Another surefire way to know you're in a toxic workplace is they team up against you or they never speak up for you. What I mean by that is, Maybe um, you're in a meeting and all of them come together to tell you everything you're doing wrong. And they just are just really pounding down on you, giving you no breathing room, no grace. You're not allowed to really explain yourself. You're kind of surprised as to where this is even coming from. And on the flip side of that, let's say it's one person that's attacking you and you're in a meeting or whatever on a conference call. 
and this person is saying some things that you know to be inaccurate and other people around the board know to be inaccurate too, but no one's saying anything. You're, you're left to, to fend for yourself. If you're left to fend for yourself, even though they know the truth and they're just not saying anything, that's toxic, that's abuse. And they're, they're, they're allowing you to be alienated. They are really, I mean, they may not be directly involved, but they're allowing for it. They're clearly okay with it if they're not gonna speak up for you. That kind of stuff is toxic. It's not cool, it's not fun, it's not professional. But unfortunately, that kind of uh, unprofessional behavior is allowed in a lot of workplaces. So if that's happening to you, just know it's toxic. Another surefire way to know you're in a toxic workplace is they're vague with their instructions, but very specific with their criticism. Meaning they might say, hey, go find some flowers. You say, okay. So you go out and you pick some flowers or whatever. And then when you go back to present them with the flowers, they're like, well, I don't see tulips here. I don't see daisies. I don't see, and it's like, well, wait, but you just said go pick some, and then they move the goalpost. Well, I wanted you to get, okay, listen, I'm not a mind reader and neither are you. If they're very vague with their instructions, I would just, anytime they give you instructions, just be very specific with your with your follow-up. Ask very point for point, what do you mean by this? Okay, cool, what do you mean by that? Okay, cool, because they're gonna keep doing that. And the point is to make you look unprofessional or like you don't know what you're doing. That's the whole goal. I don't know why, you know, but that's how some people are. So yeah, being vague with their instructions for you, but specific with their criticism, I mean, that's calculated. They already knew what they were going to whine at you about. They already knew what they wanted to tear you down about. They just needed to set you up for it. It's demented, but it sadly happens. All right, so I mentioned before kind of gaslighting, but yeah, the next sign is that they gaslight you in your experience. So let's say you've gone through some stuff and you present it to them. You present it to the group, to your boss, whatever. They're gonna tell you that what you experienced didn't happen. They're gonna tell you it wasn't what you thought. They're gonna tell you it's in your head or you're overreacting or you're being sensitive. They're gonna invalidate your feelings. That's not cool. Your, your feelings matter, you matter, your opinion matters, and it's not in your head. You're not making it up. It is happening to you. But if they acknowledge it, then they might have to change their behavior. So they're gonna tell you it's not happening because it's easier that way for them because also they're ganging up on you. So the group consensus is more important than the individual. Anytime that mentality shines through, just know you're in a toxic workplace. This one might not apply to everyone, but another surefire way to know you're in a toxic work environment is that they're stalking your personal social media. And they're using that information that they get from it to punish you professionally. So they're treating you differently based on the things that are on your own personal page. They have nothing to do with work. They're just a day in your life. They don't like you and what they, they see that you represent. And for some reason that sets them off. And then they're bringing that into the workplace. That's toxic. It should be illegal, but it's definitely toxic. It's abuse. They shouldn't have any access to your personal social media. And if they do, that's got nothing to do with them. That has nothing to do with the workplace, unless it of course does. Unless it of course, you're talking about your job on social media, you know, you're shit talking them, whatever, that's different. But if you're just living your life and they don't like something about the way you live your life, they should not be able to bring that into the workplace. Unfortunately, some people do. So if that's happening to you, know that it's not okay. You don't need to change anything about yourself, but know that that's not okay, and unfortunately it does happen. Speaking of, um, another surefire way uh, to know that you're in a toxic workplace is they use their personal opinion and beliefs to punish you professionally. So kind of in line with stalking your personal social media, maybe they just know who you are in life in general. Maybe they are super conservative and you're super liberal. And it should be a non-issue in the workplace because you should just be working, right? But they're using the fact that you're super liberal to treat you differently than other people or to, to punish you or to give, you know, to just treat you like not a human being. That's not okay. A person's personal beliefs and opinions should have no bearing on the actual professional environment. Unfortunately, that does shine through. If that's allowed to happen, it can make for a very, very draining, just bad situation. It's not a good place to be when you're targeted uh, just for being different or what they perceive to be different. Cause it doesn't even mean you're different. You're just you. Continue being you and just be on the lookout for that. Cause that's something that happens a lot. And hopefully you've got resources like HR or something like that you could reach out to, but it might just mean you need to move on because some people, they view their opinion as the, the end all be all. It's the highest of orders and it can't be, you know, they can't be dissuaded. They cannot change their opinion. You know what I'm saying? So do with that information what you will. Another surefire way to know you're in a toxic workplace is you're treated differently than your other colleagues. So let's say there are rules that specifically apply to you and you only, unless you have a very specified job, a different job, that shouldn't be the case. All the rules should just apply to everybody. Okay, so if you're required to, 
you know, to put something on your calendar, they should also be re required to put something on their calendar. It shouldn't be just you have to do a thing, okay? Because that's discrimination, you know what I'm saying? That rules shouldn't just apply to you. If you're treated differently than your colleagues, I would seriously take a step back and say, all right, what situation am I in right now? What's happening here? Is this legal? Like, am I allowed to be treated this way? No, you're not allowed to be treated this way, but some people, they'll do it anyway. Um, so just be on the lookout for that. You should be across the board equal. It shouldn't be someone being treated as better or worse. Nope, it should, and it should all be open for discussion. Everyone should be able to talk about things, but if you're being treated differently than your colleagues and you know you haven't done anything wrong, or maybe you have, there should be room for improvement, room for grace, room for getting better. If they don't allow for that, then they're just discriminating against you. Finally, um, the, a good way to know you're in a toxic workplace is nothing's ever good enough and um, they encourage overworking. So kind of like moving the goalposts and all that good stuff, um, you, they, you just, no matter what you do, no matter how high they raise the bar, when you meet the bar, they're, they're just gonna be like, well, what else, what next? That's not cool, that's not healthy, that's intentional. They don't want you to feel like you're doing a good job. That's intentional. And if they're encouraging you to overwork, you know, work extra hours, miss time with your family, you're always having to be stressed about the next assignment, they never want you to take a break, that's toxic. You deserve rest. You deserve rest even within the workplace. You know what I'm saying? Any, any boss or any institution that's wanting you to always constantly be working, always, like that's toxic. That's unhealthy. You will die eventually doing that. You will burn yourself out. And if they are the kind of environment that's going to allow you to burn yourself out, they don't value you. They don't, they don't value their people. I don't care how much they say they do. Um, did I miss anything? Or is there any tips? Or uh, do you disagree with this list? I'm sure I could go on for like 50 you know, different examples. I've gotten a lot of feedback from my friends about what they've experienced and that helped me put this list together. Um, so let me know what you think. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget, I post new content every Monday and Thursday. I post my shorts every, like every other day. I post music a couple times a year. Um, so please uh, feel free to like, subscribe and share. Comment below, say, hey, I subscribed. I'd love to hear from you. Um, we're beautiful. You're powerful. You deserve the very best. You deserve to be respected everywhere and especially in the workplace. We attract love, light, peace, safety, and security, as long as we say we do. I will talk to you later.